So now we're on 2-9, which is page 23. Um, <clears throat> if I've got things that are dividing, Roni, you're so right. It's going to be subtraction. And you guys, you might remember, you might be like, why? Well, I'll give you the rule and then I'll tell you the why. You guys, this rule sounds terrible when we write it in terms of F and G. Here we go. It's the lower function, G. times the derivative of the higher, f prime. Roni said minus, I agree. If we just did the lower times the derivative of the higher, what do you think we want to subtract from that? Yeah, she's saying the higher times the derivative of the lower, I agree. The higher times the derivative of the lower, making sure I do it in the right order, because I got a little song for you, all over the lower one squared. Here's this fancy rule to help you. Do you agree this is the higher function? This is the lower function, yeah? And I, 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 here we go. So do you agree if we've got to take the lower function, we're going to call this, and I promise you're going to want to write this down. This is going to be the lower function, low, times the derivative of the higher. You want to know what we're going to call that guy? D high. So that's just D means derivative of the higher function. So this is low d high minus high, the higher function, which is just f. What do you think we're going to call? D low. D low. And then this is the best part, you guys. What's it all over? Low, low. low. It's over me. It's all over me, me, me. Low, low. So when you think product rule, people are like, oh, that's the fig plus gif. Yes. When we're thinking quotient rule, you are going to, I know you are because every kid does, and this is not just a me rule, any calculus teacher is teaching their kids this because this is miserable. They're calling it low D high minus high D low all over low low. And you might be like, oh shoot, what if I started with the high D low? Excuse me, doesn't the world revolve around me, low? I come first always, okay? I always come first because it's subtracting, it makes a difference, right? You gotta put me first, low D high, Minus high D low all over me, me, low, low. Okay? Let's practice it. This guy right here, J of X. Whew. Let's go find this derivative. If there is division in it, we must use quotient rule. Here we go. What's my lower function? Yeah, you better put that in parentheses. Low, D high. We're going to multiply that low times the derivative of the higher. You got it. Low D high. Minus. High? Thanks. D low. All over. Low. Low. Done. Period. Don't care. We're done. Are we down with that? Okay, 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 okay. Check this out. We've seen one of these before. Again, I'm not quizzing you on this, but I just want you to start noticing. If this is F, go ahead and label this one F. Let's go label this guy F prime. You're like, where the heck did that stuff even come from? We've just seen this before. If this is F, what is F's slope here? Positive or negative? Positive, positive approaching zero. zero, right? My slope went from positive to approaching zero. What are these slope values, these F prime values? What are these Y values on this graph? Are they positive? Yeah. Are they approaching zero, that Y value? Yeah. You know, so this F's slope here is represented in these Y values here on the F prime graph. and messes with your head because you're like, but that one's increasing and this one's decreasing, but aren't these slope values actually decreasing? They're approaching zero. Okay, so this guy matches. Again, I just want you guys to see this. What's happening to these blue slopes? They go from zero to negative to really negative. What are these Y values doing? They go from zero. Are these y values negative? Are these y values going real negative? Whew. Would you say that my function is continuous here? No. Therefore, is it differentiable here? Can't have a slope where it's not continuous. That's why we don't have any f prime value right here. What are my slope values doing here? They're very, they're very negative and they're approaching zero. What are these y values doing here? They're very 
negative and approaching zero. Lastly, what are these slope va oops, what are these slope values doing? They start at zero and they get a little positive. Aren't these y values zero and they stay a little positive? Okay, so that's just a little, I wanted to see you guys to see f compared to f prime in the form of a graph. Don't worry, we don't need to have it memorized. Let's try this AP test question. Here we go. Okay, if here's a function, what's the derivative? Cool. Doesn't this function involve division? We got to go talk about myself. Low d high minus high d low all over low low. Let's do it. What's low? You best be putting that in parentheses. D high. Plus or minus? It's the minus, you guys, doesn't this, can you think of this uh, division sign as just a very long minus sign? You know what I'm saying? It's just like a, that's going to remind me to use subtraction. Low d high minus high, you best be putting that in parentheses, because we got to multiply that by what? D low, very good, three. All over? Thanks, Hanny. The denominator, low squared, low, low. Do we like that denominator A, B, C, and D? I'm digging it, and I'm really digging that I don't get, have to distribute it. You know what I'm saying? What about the top? What's the top going to distribute into? 6x plus 4. Keep going. Um, 6x plus 9. Okay. What about this? Okay, so you're going to do minus parentheses 6x plus 9? Okay, just don't forget that parenthesis. Or some people might have jumped. What do those simplify to? 6x plus four, and then minus six X minus nine? Okay, final answer. My six X's cancel out, don't they? Four minus nine gets me a negative five. Ooh, were they brutal with this one right here? How did they get 12 X? What would you have done to get 12 X? Put a plus sign right there, and then four plus nine is 13. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're ornery with their other options. They are not picking these answers out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? What? <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for asking for clarification. All right. So we got uh, low D high plus or minus? minus minus low D high minus high. Love it. Times D low. G prime of three all over low, low G of three. We got a square it. Now, it's just a plug and chug, y'all. Okay, G of 3 from my table. What do we got? What's G of 3? 2 times F prime of 3. 5 minus F of 3 times G prime of 3. Beautiful. All over me, me. G of 3? Square it. AP is making you simplify this. What are we going to start with? That'd be a little 10. Ooh, a plus or minus 2? It is minus a positive 2. Good. All over 4. Final answer? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Find the equation of a tangent line to this curve at that point. Ooh. Let's even go take a peek. What does that curve even look like? X squared, if I've got X squared plus 3, and I divide that by, divide, 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 means I got to use a certain rule. Here's this equation. They want the equation of the uh, tangent line at this point, one, two, boom. What will my slope be, positive or negative? Okay, should be negative. Let's go do it. Let's go do it. Let's go find that slope. How would I find the slope of this function? Got to use the quotient rule because there's division. Starts with me every time. The world revolves around me. If you didn't know that yet, you're a year behind. Here we go. What's low? Two. Two. Just two, right? Oh, wait. No, no, no. It's 2x. Yeah. Huh. I almost did d low first. No, it's just me. Just me. Low first times the derivative of the higher. 2x. 2x. 2x again, right? Low d high minus, because Roni said uh, with division we're subtracting. Agreed. Low d high minus high. You best be putting that in parentheses or AP is going to give you no point because that has to be distributed to what? D low, which is 2, all over me, me. 2x to what power? Beautiful. Guys, that's the slope, the y prime, at any x-coordinate. 
Where do they want the slope? You know it, but I only care when x is 1, right? Like, I'm not going to put the... I, there's no y for me to put in. Whew, let's go do it, you guys. If x is 1, what are we going to get right here? 2. 2 times? Two. Great. You could just write 4 there. I don't care. AP won't care. Minus. Four times. 4 times 2. You could say 4 times 2, or you could say 8. I don't care. AP doesn't care. Over? If x is uh, 1, we get 4 down there. Let's simplify that. Did you get a slope of negative 1? You're, okay. Equation of the tangent line every time is point-slope form. Let's do it. Uh, some people are going to need a little reminder of that, and here it is. Uh, along with that unit circle, you're going to get that tattooed on your face as well, okay? I thought we agreed on form. Unit circle, point-slope form. I dig it. But you all have to do it. It's a group effort because we all need to be able to look in either direction and help each other out. Okay? Okay. You guys, what's the equation going to be? Y minus 2. What's my slope? Negative 1. X minus 1. Oh, gosh. This is miserable. Do I really want to do this one? Oh. Uh, happy Wednesday. We're going to skip that guy. Okay. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Jeez. <laughs> This one doesn't look much easier, but at least it doesn't have a cube root. We got this, you guys. I'm actually going to give you two and a half minutes to try this one on your own. I want you to give it a shot. You got this. Actually, you might need a little help to get started. <laughs> How about this? Let's just talk about what's h prime, not in terms of zero yet. Let's just talk h prime of x. What's the derivative of this guy? What's low? Yeah, you just always take the lower function. g of x minus 1. That's low. D high, be careful, 6F of X is the same as 6 times F of X. How would I take the derivative of that higher? Say it again. If we will involve an F prime, say it again. Okay. It is 6F prime. You always leave the constant times the derivative, and you might be like, hold up, why aren't we doing product rule? We can do product rule. This is kind of what we talked about at the beginning. If we did product rule, because we have one function times another, agreed, what is f prime? What's the derivative of 6? 0, right? f prime, the derivative of 6 is 0 because the derivative of the constant is 0. So I'd have 0 times f. Do you agree that we can just leave that off? 0 times anything? Plus, product rule is addition, the derivative of the second, how do I write that? F prime times the first. Six. So you guys, the derivative of the six F is just going to be six F prime. You just leave the constant, multiply it by the derivative of the second. That's what it simplifies with fig plus gif every single time. Oh, good call. Low, okay, 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 okay. Low d high. My bad, my bad, my bad. The derivative of the higher was 6 f prime. Thank you so much, L. So this is low d high. I'll even just do this. Boop, just so we're clear. Minus, low d high, minus high. High, 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 high. That's okay. Good, and now you're right, Beck. What's the derivative of the lower? G prime of x, love it. Low d high minus high d low all over low, low. Go for it. They want that at h at zero. Let's see who gets it. Um, I would have gotten g of zero. So I'm going to put this. Did a negative two minus one. So if you didn't get negative five, double check. I had six times a half. Minus 6 times 4 times 3 halves, all over negative 2 minus 1 squared. You got it? Final answer? Where did you go wrong, Roni? Um, the bottom, G prime, I put G prime of that was a little low. Oh, yeah, yeah. You didn't say D low, D low. It's just low, low, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got, um, oh. so we got negative 9 minus 36 over 9. We got negative 45 over 9 is negative 5. Whew! They, I don't think that they'll do that to you. Um, they will do 
Um, all right, so let's go try this guy. Oh, oh, it's a lot. Because this is some new, you know, this new stuff that we got to be dealing with. Oh, we got division, right? Division looks kind of like a minus sign. Back to Roni. Remember, Roni, when you were like, division's going to use subtraction. Let's talk about why. Anyone remember what x cubed times x to the fifth is? X to the seventh. Um, x to the seventh. <laughs> well, I thought cubed is two. I totally, I agree. <laughs> okay, and then, you guys, what's x to the fifth divided by x to the third? So what did you do with your exponents here when you were multiplying, hashtag product rule? You added your exponents. What were we doing here when we were dividing? What did we do with our exponents? We subtracted, that's why quotient rule has the minus sign in it. Word? Word. Word. Let's do it, you guys. One last one in this section. If f is cosine divided by natural log, f prime is going to be, we got to use the quotient rule. What's me? What's me? Low. Low. Ln of x. D high, be careful. Negative sign. Yes. Negative sign. Low D high minus. Low D high minus. High. Ooh, who remembers the derivative of natural log of X? One over that letter right there. You okay with that? That's a hard one to remember. Derivative of natural log is one over X. Whew, all over, wow, low, low. Do you agree? None of these just have an ln of x squared on the bottom. They all have this extra x. This is very AP of them. You're like, what the heck? Yeah, you guys, let's take a peek. What's this gonna simplify to right here? How can we rewrite that? Well, that's how it's already written. Couldn't I just throw my negative out front? Could I say that's the same as negative natural log of x times the sine of x? You could throw that negative out front, right? Minus 1 over x cosine of x. I'm just kind of giving us leading coefficients over natural log of x squared. This is very AP because our answer, our original answer is right. They just wrote it in a different form. So ours is right. We got to just figure out which one is equivalent. What are they missing in all of these that we have right here? Do you agree none of them have a 1 over x? So you might be like, oh my gosh, did I do it wrong? No, they just got rid of it. What would you multiply 1 over x by to get rid of 1 over x? x? X. So if I multiply this little ditty by an x, don't I have to multiply this little ditty and this little ditty by an x? Everyone has to get a piece of chocolate or a gummy bear, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, what is that now leading us to an answer? So A doesn't have this little ne negative sign out front, right? I like A, but it's missing a minus sign right there. D? Oh my gosh. <laughs> this one's missing that minus sign. You think it's B? Yeah. Okay, you guys, 210. Here we go. This is the end of the unit. This is it. End of unit two. Oh my God, I'm not ready. We're on page 25. Oh, look at these rules. Let's fill in some that we already know. What's the derivative of the sine? Cosine. What's the derivative of cosine? I know, that's annoying. Okay, let's skip, let's skip, let's skip. What's the derivative of e to the x? Holler, we love that one, right, Evan? What's the derivative of natural log? Boom. So we already know four. I'm going to give you four more, but we really only need two more. AP doesn't ask us about all of these other four. They only ask us, and so maybe give yourself a little star, these ones. These are really the only ones they ask us about, you guys. I've never seen them put cosecant or cotangent on there, so that's a gift. Because i got to be your calc teacher, I'm going to tell you what they are, but we're really not going to hit those two as much as these other. But you guys, so you already know four of the six, right? So we got to know, we got to find out the derivative of tangent today. Oh, derivative of tangent. So we're going to actually go prove that one. The derivative of tangent, we don't know, but how can we rewrite tangent? How can we rewrite tangent? I just put up the, the little sign of it. <coughs> sine over cosine, right? Have I changed my problem at all? No, I haven't. You guys, now if I'm asking for the derivative of sine divided by cosine, what rule would I need? Low D high D 
You know what I'm saying? Because we got division. Let's do it. What would the derivative of sine over cosine be starting with me? Low. Good. Cosine is me. Low. D high. D high. The high is sine. Love it. Low D high, do you agree, is cosine times cosine? Minus. Low D high minus high. High is sine of x. D low. Negative sine of x. Mm. All over. Excuse me. Low, low. Cosine of x squared. That is one way to write it, you guys. Could I also write it this way? Boop. Wait, let me put the, make this very clear. Could I write it right, boop, like that? Cosine squared x. Yeah, let me put this nice and clear. This is the exact same thing. Okay? Okay. Guys, that looks like a terrible rule. I'm not going to make you write that out here. Let's simplify it. What's cosine times cosine? Cosine squared. We can do our fancy squared in the middle. Plus or minus sine squared? Right? Isn't it a negative times a negative? Plus a sine squared all over cosine squared. Guys, you were in pre-calc for a reason. Yeah. Sine squared plus cosine squared. Hannah has that tattooed on her. Sine squared plus cosine squared is one. What is one over cosine? Secant. Secant. Nice, you guys. Therefore, one over cosine squared would be? Secant squared. We just came up with the derivative of tangent. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. AP makes you use that quite a bit. Whew. Could I write that as secant squared? Sure. AP is going to write it this way. You down with that? Do you want me to go through and prove these other three? No. no. Here we go. Uh, this one, again, they don't ask us about this one. The derivative of cosecant is negative cotangent cosecant. Gugh, I'm glad they don't ask it. The derivative of cosecant, they don't ask it. It's negative cotangent of x times cosecant of x. Blech, we won't need it. Let's do the other one that we don't need. The derivative of cotangent is just negative cosecant squared. I'm just letting you know, I'm not going to ask you because AP is not going to ask you. Okay? Will Miss Meister next year in 1151? Yes. This year, I wouldn't focus on these two. The derivative of secant, they do ask us, you guys. That is secant of x times the tangent of x. So again, the most important ones, you just learned two new ones. You already knew the others. Those are what we've got to memorize. So knowing that, it says find the equation of the tangent line of my function, which is just tangent, when x is pi over 4. Let's go do it. The, derivative, the, the equation of a tangent line, I need a point. Maybe we should go find our point first. If x is pi over 4, what would be my y? I would need to plug that in right here. Is it root 2 over 2? Ah, that's my, oh. Yeah, okay. At pi over 4, the coordinates are root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. Therefore, what is the tangent at pi over 4? Very good. The y over the x is 1. Very good. So, a couple ways I could have written that point. I could have said f of pi over 4 is 1, and that just tells me that the point is pi over 4, 1. We now have a point. We need a slope to go in point-slope form. If my function is tangent, i got to go find the derivative. We just wrote out, we just derived. What is the derivative of tangent? We just wrote that out. Secant squared. They want that derivative when x is pi over 4. And you're like, oh my gosh, I need the secant of pi over 4, and i got to figure out what that is squared. <sighs> Let's think real fast. Pi over 4, secant is the reciprocal of which coordinate, x or the y? Secant goes with cosine. Cosine is the x. What's the x coordinate at pi over 4? root 2 over 2. The secant of that is just the flip. What's the flip of root 2 over 2? Two? Two, two over 2. Okay, okay, real fast. I'm going to remind us. Cosine of pi over 4 was root 2 over 2. Just flip it. Don't be fancy. Just flip it. 2 over root 2. Two over root two. What do we need to do to that then? 
We got to, well, no, we got to square it. Right? Don't worry about that. Regardless, we got to square it. Because that's going to take care of it. You know what I'm saying, Roni? What's two squared on top? Root two on the bottom? Two, root two squared is going to get me two. What's my slope? Yeah. So, what is my point slope form knowing this point and now this slope? Y minus equals my slope. X minus. Beautiful. Let's skip that first one because it's talking about those rules that I don't even care about. Let's go with the second one. Whew. Find the derivative of G if G is tangent divided by 4. Which rule do we need to use? Quotient is my favorite rule. What's the low? Secant of X. Love it. Low is secant of X. D high. Derivative of tangent. Flip back if you need it. Very good. Oh, derivative of plus four? Zero. Very good. So do you agree there's my low D high? Plus or minus? Minus. Hey! Excuse me. Low D high minus high must be in parentheses, K math. D low. Derivative of the lower. Curfew, you okay, Bubba? Yes. Yeah. The derivative of secant is secant X tangent X. That's one that we do need to get tattooed on us. All over. <laughs> We're getting a lot of calc tattoos. All over. Secant squared. Guys, that's it. I don't care. We don't need to simplify that. We're going to just do two more. Here we go. These last two. This is it. Whew. This goes back. This goes back to that big old formal definition of the derivative. Whew. Here's the deal. This goes back to that formal definition of the derivative. What they're asking in this question, Evan, is what's the derivative of my function when x is pi over 3? That's what they're asking just in symbols. Do they tell you what the function is? So this right here is asking what's the derivative of my function that they just told me what my function is when x is pi over 3. Okay, so if I were you, I'd back this out. Oops, I would say, okay, ain't no thing, ain't no thing. I see some answers. Here we go. If my function is secant, what's my derivative? Secant tangent. You okay with that? That's from our little chart from today. Where do they want that derivative? Because it's a uh, multiple choice, we got to think about the unit circle. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. We got to do secant of pi over 3 times the tangent of pi over 3. Oh, my gosh. And I feel like pi over 3 we struggle with. Because is it the first, second, or third tick mark? Third. It's the third one. It's pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3. What are the coordinates at that third tick mark? Um, one half. One half. One half. Very good, you guys. That's my x or my cosine. That's my y or my sine. We need the secant at pi over 3. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. The cosine is a half. Therefore, the secant two. is 2. The reciprocal of cosine is secant. You okay with that? Shmeed, you okay with that? Okay. Let's go tangent at pi over 3. Tangent is the y over the x. When I write... Uh, root 3 over 2 divided by a half. Are my halves going to cancel out? Yes. Yeah, because it's the same exact thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. Root 3 over 2 times 2 over 1. But 2s are going to cancel out. So anyone who just jumps straight to root 3, you're good. Oh, golly. <laughs> Do we have to take it that far? No. Low, low. Right. Well. Beck, you couldn't make me feel better if you tried. What is my final answer? Yeah, what would my numerical final answer be? Two root three, whoopsies. Um, but that's again, this is letting me see, show you because we're gonna have one of these on your test. When I give you this, it's asking for the derivative of the function at that x value. Test won't be till middle to end of next week. Yeah, okay, last one, last one, last one. 
see you at the end. This is it. Last one. Do we have to do fig plus gif on this one? Yeah. Yeah. We got cosine times tangent. You guys, since we're multiplying here, we got to go fig plus gif. If cosine is my f function and tangent is my g function, what is f prime going to be? Careful. These negative signs are what's going to cost us. It's negative sign. Times, that was uh, f prime. We got to multiply that times g, which is what? Okay. Fig plus gif. When we're multiplying, we add. What's g prime? You might need to go to your chart. Good job, you guys. If you're starting to get that memorized, that's great because we're going to need it memorized. Times f. Just cosine of x. Does that simplify to any of these? I'm a little nervous. Let's see. I don't see it, right? Not saying we're wrong. We've got to figure out what's equivalent. How can I rewrite tangent here? Sine over cosine. So if I multiplied these together, if tangent was sine over cosine, what would this turn into? Negative sine squared over? Very good. What about this one? Secant squared is 1 over cosine squared. If that's 1 over cosine squared times a cosine, wouldn't it just be, oh, true, wouldn't, it would be secant, but is that the same as 1 over cosine? And Ev, the only reason I kept it like this is because I see some comdoms, which make me happy. I see some comdoms. Since I've got comdoms, can I put these together as 1 minus sine squared? Or negative sine squared plus one. I don't care. I wrote this this way so that people might be like, wait a minute. Isn't sine squared plus cosine squared equal to one? Therefore, what's one minus sine squared? Cosine squared over a cosine? Oh, 